Hello from the Forstronics YouTube channel. Welcome to Controlling Water Flow with the Solenoid and Arduino IoT Cloud. And this will be part one in a two-part series. Before I get started, I'll just say, if you like what you see here, please subscribe to my YouTube channel or hit the like button for the video. And if you wanna check out Forstronics for pay design services, go to forstronics.com. All right, let's get started. All right, so here's an overview of what we plan to cover in part one and two. So first off, we're gonna start with a linear solenoid that's gonna be integrated with a valve to control you know, water or gas or oil flow. So we'll, we'll talk about the hardware, what it takes to drive a solenoid circuit. We'll give an overview of what a solenoid is. We're gonna be using an ESP32 because of its Wi-Fi capabilities to control our solenoid and also to connect to the Arduino IoT Cloud. And on the IoT Cloud, we'll look at how to set up a simple switch to control our solenoid from the cloud. So you can do it from, from the comfort of your couch or from you know, another country. All you need is an internet connection to control it. And we'll also look at how to set up a scheduler on the IoT cloud so the solenoid turns on at a certain interval every day or every week for you know 10 seconds, a minute, 10 minutes. So that's what we're gonna cover in part one and two. In part one, we're gonna focus more on the hardware setup. What is a solenoid? How do we drive it? And we'll set up a simple sketch to control it uh, manually from the ESP32. Let me start off by saying I'm not a solenoid expert. In fact, this is the first time I've controlled a solenoid. So it's sort of a beginner first timer giving probably other beginners an overview of how things work. So I'm not a solenoid expert. If anything I miss, if, if someone knows a lot about solenoids, please comment in this section below. But a solenoid's a lot like a mechanical relay. And I've done a lot of circuits for mechanical relays, uh, a lot of products that are actually on the market. Because the solenoid's gonna work based on current through a coil that creates a magnetic field, and that magnetic field is gonna move a plunger. Similar to a, uh, you know, a relay. A relay is typically open, and then a, applying a current creates a magnetic field that pushes the relay closed. Whenever you have current flow through any wire, it creates a magnetic field. The way to make the magnetic field stronger is by coiling the wire in tight coils so that you create more of a magnetic field to uh, actually move something. So a solenoid can be used for different things. It can be used for door locks, things like that. We're using a solenoid, or I'm using a solenoid that's integrated with a valve to open or close the valve so water, or gas, or something can flow. So a solenoid typically has a plunger and that plunger is held into place in its default state with a spring typically. So when you apply current through the coil inside the solenoid, it creates a magnetic field that moves the plunger out from its default spot. And you know, its default spot may be open or it may be closed. For our tutorial, I'm gonna use a linear solenoid that's normally closed, meaning water can't flow through it. And then when you apply current, and create the magnetic field, it opens. And as you can imagine, the stronger the spring, the more pressure or PSI the solenoid can handle. But of course, the stronger the spring, the more current you need to create a stronger magnetic field to move that plunger out of its default position. So when the solenoid's in its default position, you know, your, your circuit's basically consuming no current. And then when it's actuated, then you're getting typically a high current consumption. Okay, let's look at our solenoid control circuit. So we're gonna use a digital pin on our ESP32, low and high, to turn the solenoid closed or open. So if we look at our uh, diagram here, our schematic, the solenoid coil is represented by this green box. And I'm gonna be using a 12 volt power supply. So I'm, and I'll provide all the part numbers for stuff I'm using on a later slide. But the idea is solenoids can come in AC power, they can come in 24 volts DC, they can also come in 12 volts DC. I'm using a 12 volt DC solenoid. On one end of the solenoid power wires, I have 12 volts, and on the other end I have it connected to the drain of my N-channel MOSFET. I'm gonna use my N-channel MOSFET like a switch. So I'm, I'm assuming folks watching have a, you know, a basic understanding of how basic circuit components work. I'll go over briefly how the MOSFET works. If you want more information, there's plenty of tutorials out there. If I have a zero volt difference between the gate and the source, the gate being here, where my digital pin is connected, and the source being connected to ground, if I have zero volt difference potential between the gate and the source, 
then my MOSFET is off or it acts like an open so no current can flow through the coil because there's no path to ground. If I pull it high and for the MOSFET I'm using, you know, I need to get it about four volts or higher to, to close it or to turn it on. And so if I take the gate up to four volts or higher, and I'm gonna use five volts in this example, with the source connected to ground, I'll get a five volt difference. My end channel MOSFET will turn on or close, and all of a sudden current can flow through the solenoid coil, which actuates the solenoid and opens the valve in our case. R1 is just serving as a current limiting resistor for protection of the uh, the digital pin from the ESP32. R2 is just meant to be a pull down so that if for some reason this gate is floating when there's no power or whatever, or when we're programming our ESP32, R2 just makes sure the gate stays at the same potential as the source so it doesn't accidentally turn on. And then finally, this flyback diode is important because when we have current th flow through the coil, it creates a magnetic field. That magnetic field has stored energy. So when we open our switch after we've had current flowing, what happens is the magnetic field begins to collapse. The solenoid goes back to its default connect, uh, position. But that magnetic field, when it collapses, it induces current back onto the, the circuit and the flyback diode will forward bias and allow that, that uh, extra energy to just dissipate. Now, one thing you might say is, if you're using an ESP32, ESP32s work with 3.3 volts, so you can only get a 3.3 volt high out. So if I need above four volts or above to drive my gate, I need something else besides just the ESP32 pin. So I'm also using in my prototyping a level shifting circuit. For this example, you know, I'm, I'm calling this prototyping. I just pulled a MOSFET I had out of my lab stock. Now you may be able to find a, a MOSFET for this application. In fact, I know you can, that 3.3 volts will drive it. For me, I'm doing prototyping. In the future, I'll put this all together on a custom PCB and I may not need the level shifting circuit, but for the MOSFET that I had in my lab stock, I needed I needed five volts to drive it. On my ESP32 board that I designed for a different application that I'm just using for prototyping here, I already have a level shifting circuit integrated on it. So once again, you may or may not need this level shifting circuit. And the idea here with this level shifting circuit is we're using a MOSFET again. We have the gate of the MOSFET tied to 3.3 3 .3 volts. We have the source tied to the digital pin of the ESP32, and then we have a five volt power supply that can pull up this line with a 10K resistor. But the idea here is when my ESP32 pin is an active low, the source is low, the gate is at 3.3 volts, and for this MOSFET, that's plenty of uh, voltage difference to turn it on. This is a lower power MOSFET. We basically get a low here because we have it, this acts like a short. And so this five volt, this potential gets pulled to zero. And I should say this is connected to here and that pulls this low. So our switch is open or off. If I apply a 3.3 volt logic here, all of a sudden our gate and source are at the same voltage potential. So there's zero voltage difference between the gate and the source. The MOSFET turns off and acts like an open. So this five volts pulls this potential up to five volts, which essentially turns our MOSFET on or closes the switch. The gate to source really, when you turn it on, very little current flows, you know, nanoamps or microamps of current. So it's okay that, you know, I have these resistors in between here. It'll still turn on fine. Okay, that's our hardware setup, and like I said before, I'll provide a bomb at the end so you can see what I, what I used. Okay, now we're gonna take a look at our Arduino code, and of course, we're gonna have different code in part two for using Arduino IoT Cloud, but for this demonstration of the hardware, I just set up a simple sketch where I have a switch that uh, one of the pins is an input pull-up, so it's automatically high if it's left floating, then I have a switch between this pin and ground, which will pull this pin low. So you can see if this pin is high, our drive pin is low, so the MOSFET switch is off or open, 
And then if my switch pulls our control pin low, then our drive pin goes high and turns our switch on or closes our switch. Okay, now let's look at our uh, circuit and our code in action. So what you're looking at is my kitchen sink and this hose, this black hose piece is connected to my solenoid. Now what I had to do was I found out when you turn on the solenoid, water can actually shoot out of here pretty quickly and I didn't want water to splash on my electronics. So I have this uh, nozzle here to restrict the flow of water, but we'll see you obviously when it's turned on. And so uh, I'm going to start the video and we can see that's our, our solenoid and I'll give you part numbers for the adapters I use to connect the hose. But the other end of the solenoid goes to a hose that goes out the window that's connected to a water line outside my house. Here I'm going to zoom in on the uh, on my circuit. So this is once again a prototyping circuit. So just stuff I had in lab stock. Here's my diode for flyback. This is my end channel MOSFET. This resistor is the current limiting resistor. And these clips are coming from my 12 volt power supply. Black is ground or low and red is high. So black is connected to the source of the MOSFET and red is connected to the power wire that goes to the solenoid. Play the video again and we'll see that here's my ESP32 circuit. This was a circuit I designed for another project. I'm just leveraging it for prototyping. But basically the pin that drives the MOSFET on and off is coming out here on one of these wires and then also another one of these wires is ground. And my level shifting circuit is on this board. And then these green wires, they connect my mechanical switch that I'll use to turn the MOSFET on or off. There's my switch right there. And then I'm going to show my power supply. I'm showing you that the output is on and my fancy power supply lets us see voltage and current. So we have it at 12 volts, but no current flowing because our MOSFET switch is open. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it on and uh, I'm going to point the camera at the solenoid. You can see the solenoid jerk when it turns on and then I'll show you the current flow. There the solenoid turned on and we can see now we have some current flowing. And so one thing to keep in mind is depending on what solenoid you get, I got a pretty, a pretty beefy one that can handle high PSI you're going to get a lot of current flow. So I'm getting above three amps or almost uh, 38 watts. Depending on what solenoid you get, you may not need this much current. Or if you get a really beefy one, you may need more. Who knows? So we'll go back and we'll go to my hose. And if I squeeze the nozzle, we can see water is flowing through the solenoid. So I let go of the trigger on there. I'm then going to turn the solenoid or our switch off. We look here, no current flowing. I'm going to turn this on. At first we see water come out, but that was just the water left in the line. So we can see it's off now. And then just for good measure, I turn it on one more time. There we go. And water is flowing. So that's the demonstration. Next, in part two, we'll show that from the Arduino cloud. Okay, here's the bomb of the parts I used. And once again, this is for prototyping. So the MOSFET I use is a little bit of an overkill. Uh, when I design my PCB, I'll use a different one. But here's the part numbers I use. Here's the part number of the solenoid. The adapters from the solenoid to the hose. The solenoid I used uses uh, what's known as MPT threads. I forget what that's called, but I got a half inch one. You can get them at different sizes. And then in the US, GHT is the typical threading for hoses at three quarter inch. Uh, so I have a female and a male. And then my valve with my solenoid is female on both sides. So I got a male. And these, these adapters are pretty easy to find. I got mine off Amazon. If you just search this on Amazon or whatever place you shop at, you'll, you'll be able to find them. Okay, that's it for part one. If you have any if you think there's anything I missed, feel free to comment or if you have any questions, uh, comment there. Uh, in part two, we'll be focusing on the Arduino cloud and the dashboard and the code for that. Uh, I'm going to assume you know how to do the basic setup to tie your Arduino device to the Arduino cloud. If not, 
I'll provide a link to the tutorial in the description for the video. That's it for part one. Thank you for watching.